Hello, my name is Patricia Rijo, and I'm going to speak about uh, Plectranta species as a key source of lead molecules for cancer research. As you all know, natural products are an important source of lead molecules, and from medicinal plants, the anti-cancer drugs are classical examples, as Paclitaxel from Taxus baccata or Vimblastine and Vicristine with these anti-cancer drugs. All anti-cancer drugs in clinical use are important from natural sources, not only directly from these molecules, but also from derivatives or related or inspired in these molecules comparing to the synthetic ones. In, as an example, Plectrantus genus are an important and available source for, of bioactive compounds. These plants belong to Lamiaceae family, like other usual and common plants that we use even in our kitchen, the sage or mint or even rosemary. So the source of this uh, family of plants are the bioactive natural products with diterpenic um, skeleton. The traditional use from these plants are from the meridional uh, globe of uh, tropical Africa, Asia, and even Australia. And they were introduced in the New World considering the Portuguese discoveries, where in Africa and Brazil, they are still used in traditional medicine. So the plants that we use in our lab are obtained from a very important collaboration from South Africa with Professor Ahmed Mohamed, and they are uh, sent by us and cultured in Portuguese uh, agriculture uh, school of the University of Lisbon. Then we dry the plants and we use them for our studies. So the natural occurring plectrantus plants derived from um, traditional medicine are a good source of abiotin diterpenoids considering the anti-tumoral activities. These compounds are described in different uh, literature from phytochemical studies, not only from these plant tracts, but also from fraction or, uh, more important, from isolated compounds. The valuable source of these bioactive compounds are, as I told you before, the diterpenoids, which are terpenes, and the most of them has this uh, uh, abiotin skeleton that are, has said before, uh, used in traditional medicine, considering here our distribution from plectrantes in the globe. Uh, some examples of the cytotoxic uh, abiotant compounds are uh, the parviflorin D, isolated in very good amounts from Plectrantus ecloni, and also another example from uh, Plectrantus madagascariensis, the 6,7-dihydroroyalinone, which belong also to a family of compounds with this parakinone moiety. And an example obtained from the a PhD student, the a, 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 now a, a postdoc, Epol uh, Netungwe, that won last year the GEA Congress Award for the Best Thesis in Phytochemistry, the Egan Stahl Award in Bronze 2022, is described in these uh, ACS Medicinal Chemistry Letters. It was chosen for the, the cover of the, the journal, and it, it's an example of how we do the isolation of these compounds. So from a plant that is described in traditional medicine, in this case, the Plectrantis mutabilis, we pick up the parts of the compounds where are more um, in more in quantity. So in this case, the leaves. We use an ultrasound assisted extraction in acetone because in previous studies, we understand that this uh, uh, method is the one that has um, 
more quantity of these compounds using less quantity and less time of extraction. And then we do a bioguided isolation uh, considering uh, colon chromatography, of course, where we continue to fractionate and isolate only the fractions that obtain uh, a bioactivity. In this case, it was a glycoprotein activity modulation uh, that leads us to the isolation of the bioactive compounds. In this case, Colion Hu, which is also an abiotin compound, where we did the, um, the structural characterization using mainly spectroscopic uh, techniques like NMR, of course, 1D and 2D, among others others and comparing with literature also we focus in uh, one new compound and also two well-known but a very uh, bioactive one this colion U that we did the quantification by HPLC. So when we isolate the compound like uh, the example uh, before we uh, then try to use it as a lead molecule to improve the bioactivity. A nice and good example of this was widely known, uh, Roy BZ, uh, has the first small molecule PKC delta selective activator that proves that the plectantogenes is an, indeed uh, a very good um, source of lead compounds. And then we introduce two uh, uh, benzoyl esters in the positions uh, 6 and 12, and we obtain in this case uh, the first small molecule that was selective in activation of the PKC delta isoform. This is a very interesting uh, application that can be used in clinics for uh, colon cancer therapy, and that opens a good way to improve the PKC biology and pharmacology because. If we elucidate the, the structural requirements to obtain the selectivity, like we did here with the PKC delta, this uh, can give us to the important uh, topics of the structure-based design to obtain other iso uh, enzyme selective agents. So the modulation of the PK, the protein kinase C uh, family of enzymes is a, a good way to improve the high potency of isoform selectivity and then um, we encourage us to exploit this family of compounds. So protein kinase C isoform can be a target of many molecular products, but uh, the problem is that they are not, or only some of them are selective to just one isoform. And this is a critical point for uh, the use in clinicals. So we have different structural activities from natural products with different family of compounds, for example, the furball esters, the bryostatins, and also the starosperdine analogous that are also used as a positive controls in different bioassays. We have other dietropines like the inginine skeleton, the daphnane, and finally the epiatan diterpenoids where we can find the colionu that previously showed you, but also the carnosol uh, that can be um, uh, obtained, for example, in, with, the, with the rosemary uh, or other polyphenolic um, compound like uh, resveratrol. This is all um, explained and in a review in 2016. So this PKC uh, family of uh, enzymes is a calcium dependent family uh, of a po potential uh, target, uh, a therapeutic target. And the discovery of this was uh, indeed related to a natural compound. Uh, the discovery of these natural furball esters, but like the, the PMA, the furball metastate uh, estate, the, the, that was isolated from oil of a seed of also of the plant, and we use in different uh, uh, bioassays has a, a potent um, uh, positive control. It mimics the uh, diacyl glycerol that is here uh, uh, assembled the structure, and this mimics 
the generation considering the unsaturated lipidic moiety considering the PMA structure too. So these formal esters competitively act like the, D the diacyl glycerol for the same binding side and then activates the PKC in the same uh, similar manner. So uh, has uh, with different uh, lead molecules, these uh, seven alpha stoxy six beta uh, hydroxyrolinone, or we call the AHR, isolated in high amounts from Plectrantis grandidentatus. We try to obtain this molecule to to do uh, use it as a lead molecule and to prepare more uh, bioactive compounds doing some basic requirements for the development of pharmaceutical form formulation using this kind of compounds as lead molecules. So for that, we prepare and did a study for the structure optimization. We also did the characterization of the structural and thermal properties of this compound. I will show you then that from Plectrantis um, dendidentatus, we can isolate this, this compound in high amounts and how to get in the higher amount of yield. And then we characterize it, for example, with optical rotation, with circular decrease. And also we found out the, um, the orthorhombic crystals of this abetan compound that it has um, and, uh, by uh, this, the differential scanning calometry, DSC, the presence of three polymorphic uh, forms. The one uh, is at room temperature and the Uh, the derivatives. And that's what we did. From this high molecule, we prepared some esters because the esters are those that are more stable considering amides or other uh, derivatives. And we understand uh, with uh, some aromatic and aliphatic esters that uh, this high BZ, uh, uh, constructing a small library of abetan uh, derivatives and using an east based screening assay on the different uh, uh, isoforms from the different uh, classes the classical uh, class, the atypicals, and also the novel ones, uh, that the Roy BZ was uh, selected to just uh, PKC delta. Uh, another interesting uh, issue is that the PMA that is active for the classical and the novel classes of isoforms, and we need to use ARA, has uh, another positive control for the atypical class. In here, the ROI, which is another um, uh, isophore, another uh, abietan isolated from Plectrantis, a natural compound, we have um, IC50 lowers and uh, with uh, activity to all of the isoforms. So this is not good for the drug, but it can be used uh, for uh, positive control because instead of two uh, positive controls for different isoforms, we can get one to uh, get uh, interesting IC50s. So we went further to study the mechanism of action of this ROIBZ as a selective activator of PKC delta, and we find out that binds to the C1 domain. 
with molecular docking studies and comparing and doing the predictive binding models uh, using um, uh, Hoi bz binding to the PKC delta C1 domain, we saw that uh, it, it binds to the same uh, manner and in the same bind, uh, uh, domain, in the C1 domain, has the, the PMA. The PMA and ROI-BZ, PMA has a positive control on, on ROI-BZ, we understand that the uh, in vitro kinase assay uh, had the selectivity to the size of form comparing to the others. So the ROI-BZ inhibits the, the proliferation of colon cancer cells and it does a selectivity to uh, the PKC delta uh, has an activator. So uh, we did the dose dependent reduction of the cell uh, growth in uh, colon cell cancer cells, and it, it has a dose dependent reduction. And we also did uh, observe the inhibitory effect of this compound, assessing the colony uh, forming ability. The inhibition of this HOI-BZ in the proliferation of these uh, cancer cells uh, was also studied to understand uh, uh, how it was associated to the, the phase uh, cell cycle. And when is, uh, we understand that it was associated to the G2M phase and also to apoptosis, and it was only mediated by apoptosis. So we also uh, study in different uh, mediators for uh, pre-apoptotic pre and pro-apoptotic mediators. And we understand that this induction of apoptosis occurred uh, on the caspase 3 and part cleavage and uh, with the reduction of the levels of anti-apoptotic uh, mediators. So the inhibition of this compound was uh, also studied considering the involvement in the mitochondrial pathway and it was also associated to the release of the cytochrome C to cytosol which was in agreement. We also uh, study and explore the anti-tumor activity of this ROI-BZ in a system that should mimetize and resembles more closer to the in vivo features. And considering this, we use the cancer stem cells with a highly enriched uh, uh, sphero sphero spheroid formation, the colon sphere. And uh, we uh, uh, understand and evaluate and observe a notable uh, dose-dependent reduction with abolishment of the colon sphere formation, as we can see here, at one micromolar of this Hoibesi compound. Uh, we also uh, uh, studied the propoptotic and anti-migratory activity in colon cancer cells, and uh, we did uh, more uh, assays considering and understanding that this compound was not uh, genotoxic in human cancer and normal cells, and in vivo, the PKC delta-dependent anti-tumor activity using the human xenograph mouse models showed no apparent toxic side effects. So these interesting compounds lead us to understand which other uh, uh, chemical fixtures we should introduce in these molecules. And so we did this prediction using molecular docking in a human PKC uh, delta isoform. So we target this, uh, this uh, target and uh, uh, found and using the protein data bank and uh, switching and, and, and trying to understand on these uh, two positions, the C2 and C, uh, C, C12 and C6 uh, position, the hydroxyl, where we could introduce different substituents. We also 
uh, this work is ongoing, but we also use some strategies to promote a targeting delivery of these compounds to cancer cells and trying to improve other issues because one of these one of the main problems of these compounds is that it is uh, not uh, water soluble and this can be a, a bioavailability problem uh, among with other uh, problematic uh, uh, features and so we didn't prepare some different novel nanosystems to uh, uh, improve the target delivery system, uh, enhance the solubility and permeability, and also retain the effect at the, the tumor site. And these strategies are uh, found in different molecules in abiotin terpenoids, like previous described, but also the phenolic compounds and also well known flavonoid scarcity. One of example was uh, was performed by Caterina Silva in that uh, time a PhD student, where she functionalized uh, the, uh, the diterpene parviflorin D, loading uh, 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 and preparing hybrid nanoparticles to target uh, uh, melanoma therapy. So we encapsulate this very active but not uh, selective at all compound. And uh, we uh, it is, uh, we uh, evaluate the the the, the parviflorin D has strongly induced cell uh, death with the very low IC fifties, but the, we understand that the the low solubility in PBS is uh, a critical uh, uh, issue to prepare this compound has a, a clinical drug so. Uh, we uh, improve with these uh, polymeric lipidic uh, nanoparticles. So these parviflorin D loaded hybrid nanoparticles were conjugated with the biopolymers and uh, lipids. So the physical and chemical characterization were performed by different uh, uh, techniques, FTIR, differential scanning calorimetry, NMR, uh, confocal laser scanning microscopy and also uh, x-ray photoelectron um, spectroscopy that confirm this uh, coating of nanoparticles. We also did the conjugation of targeting these biomolecules with uh, uh, hyaluronic acid and alpha molecular stimulating hormone. Thus, we did this comparing uh, uh, parviflorin D isolated from uh, plectron to but also with the clinical use and uh, in this case uh, proved to be uh, positive control, the paclitaxel. The, uh, the encapsulation efficiency was very uh, good uh, results, more than 85%, with interesting um, characterization of the nanoparticle. Another example was performed by uh, Caterina Garcia when she was a PhD student. Uh, in this case, preparing uh, a, a, an assembly of 6,7 dihydroroylinone with an hybrid uh, nanoparticles. In this case, we performed the isolation in high amount of the cytotoxic compounds that were used in this case in traditional medicine for skin and respiratory conditions. And the, the other compounds were then proved to 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 be uh, the the hydroroylinone with 80% um, of healed optimized extraction with the Clevenger apparatus, the one that is using in uh, usual essential oil uh, 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 distillery hydro distillation. The anti-cancer properties of this compound, comparing also with the, the nanoparticles and, of course, uh, the, the positive control, it showed that uh, this, the, the ROI has a similar IC, IC50 
with both sensitive and resistant cells for a pig glycoprotein and uh, that has the ability to evade the, the, the drug's destruction from the cells and in this case the dihydroralinone was not a substrate of this efflux pump. So the assembly of this bioactive compound with hybrid nanoparticles um, showed to have a, a, a good synthesis of the nano, hybrid nanoparticles uh, with the cytotoxic evaluation, considering the, the, um, the bioactive compound free and also in an hybrid nanoparticles uh, conjugation. In this case, the polymeric coated with gold nanoparticles loaded with this compound was also um, studied by uh, AFM, uh, studying and, and proving the morphology of these nanoparticles, and also with TAM analysis. And we um, uh, evaluate the cytotoxicity in, uh, in, in PGP uh, cancer cells. And we uh, proved that the, the, the gold uh, uh, nanoparticles loaded with this compound improved the cytotoxicity with the conjugation of this bioactive increasing 5 to 8 percent fold. The last example that I'm going to show you using these compounds in a nanosystem is again with, uh, with parviflorin D, but in this case encapsulated with uh, an in albumin nanoparticles. So as we saw previously, parviflorin D is very active in different normal and cancer and uh, with PGP um, uh, activity and we also improved the destruction of this compound, an isolated compound, and we proved to have this compound very pure to, um, to produce the, the albumin nanoparticles. So this nanosystem, uh, in this case produced with the solvation method, was encapsulated with a good efficiency encapsulation. And the, the morphology and characterization of these nanoparticles was also uh, done by uh, usual techniques, the atomic force microscopy, AFM, and SAM uh, microscopy. The last example with self-assembling nanoparticles was with the royal unknown, and, uh, and, and in this case also performed by Paul Natungui, where we used, for example, the oleic acid as an inducer using also with the linker to produce in water the self-assembly as we can see. So this self-assembling uh, uh, was was uh, also characterized by NMR and the other uh, spectroscopic um, methods like the FTIN. So these self-assembling nanoparticles of the royal unknown was studied considering the preliminary toxicity, general toxicity of the brine shrimp uh, bioassay, and that proves to continue to the cytotoxicity on cells. So we saw that the nanosystem did not decrease the cell viability at the high concentrations of 0.2 micromolar and that the activity uh, could be used as a prodrug for the release of the cytotoxic compound. So in this case, we uh, studied the, the release of this drug from the, nano, the self-assembling nanoparticles considering a slow the, uh, release of 8 part. 0.35% considering the 24 hours of the study. Also, the morphology and the characterization of the nanoparticles was uh, done. So, as a conclusion of these bioactive compounds, lead molecules, and drug candidates, a plectrant is indeed is a, a good example to obtain bioactive deterpenoids with a beta skeleton. 
considering the, the, the advantage is the low absorption and the non-selectivity of, of the, the, the cancer cells, for example, and thus the nanotechnology strategy is indeed a good, uh, a good strategy to promote the target delivery to, uh, to specific Deliver, deliver it without uh, side effects. Uh, it's a good strategy to improve uh, the solubility and stabil stability, and that this uh, formulation can uh, be a good, uh, better extension for the formulation considering the hydrophilicity, but also the therapeutic action of this natural product.